Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on Tuesday, the chilly day of oh, March. Oh, I know. Hello. 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 Out there this morning. It was rough waking up. It, it was. was. It was it freezing was a little coming nippy. here. I know. I had a sweater. People and laugh at me. I tell all of the crew here that at about 6 a.m., quarter to six, I sort of get yeah. up and I go out onto my balcony, my bathrobe and, and slippers to sort of see what the morning's like and see what I'm thinking of wearing. I was so cold today, yeah, it was and crazy. I never complain about the cold. Agree. Yeah. Only one more week of winter, though. Well, Monday not like spring, another three so months. So I hope of that winter. we are back. To the <laughs> did we even have winter? I mean, did that yeah, even it was pretty happen? mild? <laughs> <laughs> hey, in case you're tuning in today, you didn't hear yesterday's announcement. Lisa High is joining our table here for Midday Kentucky. Welcome back, Yay, my friend. Thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. So excited it. to have and Lisa here. If, if you don't know who Lisa is, of course, this is Doug High's wife. Yes. Um, who has been our morning anchor and will continue, but of course he's being deployed over to Afghanistan. Um, what, the next two weeks, I believe? Uh, end of the month. End of the month. Yeah. End of the month. Two weeks. Yeah. We're off the oh. So he'll be over there. You're going to be here waving the flag, and of course we appreciate everything yes, Doug's doing well, thank you. for this thank country. You. Um, something that I thought was really interesting, okay? Now we all know men can be big babies when it comes to, you know, saying that they are you know, got a bad flu or yeah, uh -huh. anything like no. that. Okay, so there's this <laughs> new British study that came out and basically calling for more information and education and maybe also paid medical leave for dads that are suffering from post postnatal depression. <laughs> okay, now I'm asking you about this because did you suffer from that when you had your kitties? You know, maybe a little bit on my first child, yeah. but not a lot. I, I don't, I wouldn't say it was severe. But, you know, I, I can't say that Doug had any <laughs> issues. <laughs> Let's throw Doug under the bus right now. <laughs> but, you know, as I was gaining weight in my pregnancy, yeah. he was gaining weight. Well, funny, because this is what this <laughs> man is actually saying. Of course, he's a fireman. His name is Mike Sims from London, Manchester over there in England. He's basically saying that he was doing everything that his wife was doing throughout the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he really suffered postnatal depression after the baby was delivered. He went through, he's <laughs> also saying he doesn't want to take away what his wife went through because he personally didn't give birth, but he's now suffering from postnatal depression. And is it a real thing? I That's what I'm asking. Do you I really think know. it is a <laughs> yeah, thing? I mean, I can believe it's a situationally induced, and I can believe that it's real. I don't think, but just like the, this guy was saying, the firefighter, he wasn't comparing it to his wife to take away from yeah. her. He was just saying that there is depression separate from that that maybe a man can suffer from. So, of course, I don't have kids. So I've never experienced this, but I would think what he's talking about has to be very different from what we're thinking of traditionally with a woman experiencing postpartum depression. Well, so I believe that, yeah, that could be very there real, was another but guy I think it's probably very, very I think different. I agree. And, I agree. And very different. Well, there was another guy in the survey that said he was a father of seven and the postnatal depression absolutely ruined their relationship. And as I continued to read, and I didn't want to judge, I'm from Utah where everyone has 17 children, um, <laughs> a father of seven, no wonder he was depressed. Do you know what well, I mean? Like, it's going to happen. He can't cope. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Women seem to be stronger at these sorts of things. We have to And be. also, <laughs> there is one thing that I also think women are good at is seeking help. Mm -hmm. Women get on the phone. They get on the phone. They talk to their girlfriends. They find out information. Men seem to want to just jump into bed, put the bedspread over their head, and pretend it will go away with a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. Agree? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So do you think there is a reason why men need this sort of help? Ah, uh, you know, I, I, should, I think it's kind of silly to be honest. Yeah, okay. But you know, I mean, you know, there, there may be depression involved in other, for other reasons. Okay. You know, I mean, the baby's no longer in the belly. It's now out and it's, it, it's your responsibility. Well, he's probably realizing he's got a lot of work to do now. Yeah, so all of a sudden, you know, that, <laughs> right. that makes it very difficult. I think difficult. regardless, the reality men hits. saying that they feel that they need help. So like you said, it's nice that they're coming out and saying yeah. they're needing help. I don't think it's the same as a woman with postpartum gotcha. depression. But either. even if you are struggling for the mere fact that you have seven kids, should seek help. <laughs> yes. you, will, you know, so I think yes. I'm glad. Just, no matter why, if you need help, you should get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, talking absolutely. about a little bit more of an outcry back home here in America, we're back on to the mother breastfeeding 
getting harassed. Oh, and yes. I can't believe we're still discussing it. Yeah. And this has been going on for years, as in on social media and also on television. Probably, say, you know, 10 years or so yeah. since mm -hmm. social media has really mm -hmm. kicked in. Mm -hmm. What's the story that you've got for All us, All right, so here's the story. Um, Tierra Wilson was at an IHOP for National International Pancake Day yep. um, at IHOP, and she was there with other breastfeeding mothers. Um, and they were having their breakfast. Well, they, the babies got hungry, and so they started breastfeeding. The table beside them, a, a family of three, started to harass them, making um, rude faces, saying rude comments, um, started taking pictures of them as they were breastfeeding. And the manager, one of the women went to the manager. The manager felt that, they, that the table was harassing these women, so he called the police. Mm -hmm. The police, though, came and they talked to the breastfeeding mothers about either going into the bathroom or covering up instead of talking mm -hmm. to the table that was harassing <coughs> them. Now, I don't know. I, you know, I breastfed my, both my boys. In public? Um, in public, um, but it was very rare in public. It was only because of necessity for me. I'm, I'm a very private person. I, you know, I, I'm very respectful of people's opinions, differing op opinions about this. Um, so when I would breastfeed out in public, though, I would definitely cover up. That's, I mean, I just feel that that's, you know, th that's just me. Mm. Other women may feel that, you know, that's not their obligation to do so. So well, I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? If we could it, just bring those pictures up while we're talking again, because there was something that was interesting. She wasn't, when I say this, just putting it all out there, that, um, that there was a picture of her actually breastfeeding, that, that she actually has covered herself. Well, I believe this is well. a photo she took after to go along oh. with her story. Yes. So yes. this isn't... What should, we don't know, we don't the know details. what that looks like yet. I think personally, it, it doesn't matter to me. If, if Breastfeed wherever you want. I mm -hmm. don't care if, some, if we have someone, our floor director is breastfeeding over there. It wouldn't bother <laughs> me one bit. Now, I think maybe going to IHOP and it was a group of women, multiple, all decided to breastfeed there. Am I offended by that? In no way. But uh, can you really be surprised if people give you looks when... Exactly. You could have chosen to do it elsewhere, and I'm not saying you would need to, but the, does the whole group need to be doing it once if you're not covered up? I'm personally not offended by it, but I can understand why maybe some people gave them weird looks. Mm -hmm. And maybe, Absolutely. are you asking for it when you, and not asking for it, but can you, can you be surprised? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. It doesn't I matter to me, but... Like you said, I'm sensitive to what other people think, mm -hmm. so maybe yeah, I wouldn't I, all of us at once breastfeed. Right. I think, I think you I have know. some point there, but I also noticed that she posted it on a mummy blog page. Right. So I just wonder if, if we could know what her real intention was. Was she trying to get some press about it? Because I, I really don't think mothers go out of their way to breastfeed in public to get attention. That's correct. Yeah, you know I think I mean? it's like what you said, yeah. Lisa. Yeah. It's out of necessity, and that's where you are, and you should be able to breastfeed right. wherever you want but out of necessity. But I, I don't know. When are we going to stop thinking about these things and let it just happen? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I just... I, I often think about these things when I'm looking for topics at night, which is what we do to, to discuss these things. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, when we see lots of conversations, and I think, well, it's 2017. Yeah, you know, I, just, I just don't really care. I don't care where you know, <laughs> Gay people are going nowhere, lesbians are going nowhere, breastfeeding mothers are going nowhere. All these things that we seem to have a problem with, mm -hmm. we, and I say all of us, mm -hmm. there are issues at some point in our life that we might have an opinion on, right. good or bad. But the things that we can't change, why do we still harass those people? I know. I just I know. don't understand as a human. Right. That's all. Right. Yeah. I just I feel we need to be respectful both both ways. You yeah. know, the the breastfeeding mother needs to be respectful of other people's opinions, and also other people. You don't need to be rude. Don't need to be shaming these women. Yeah. I mean, because really. listen, you've got a bunch of seven seven breastfeeding women in a, in an IHOP. I know who's going to lose. <laughs> the <laughs> other table. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it ain't the women who's going to back down. <laughs> right. um, what another story? <laughs> um, no, we're going to pick on the boys right now. Um, whether men should be manscaping. Now, back a few years ago, <laughs> yeah. there was a lot of conversation about the metrosexual, yeah. and me being in the beauty industry was all about 
the metrosexual because mm -hmm. it was a good industry right. to be in. But Prince Harry seems to have reignited. Yeah, the so issue. I kind of wanted to bring this up just to get your thoughts on it and Lisa's thoughts specifically. So because I kind of think I know how you how you feel. But um, oh, really? okay. So we've talked about manscaping. I don't like the manscaping. I like. Uh, well, let's just so, clarify well, let's to everyone what is manscaping. We're talking about shaving your chest, like upper body. We're not talking about other regions. Lower regions. We're just talking about. <laughs> well, manscaping is legs and back. It's everything, and but it's today like eyebrows, that's what we're kind of talking about. Yeah. So this came up because Prince Harry, you know, is dating Meghan Markle, yep. and he has now been seen out at the beach. There he is. He used rest. to have hair, and yeah. then <laughs> now it has disappeared, and people are talking about, you know, does he look better without it? And He's never been seen without hair in his chest before, so is he doing it for his girlfriend? And oh. uh, so <laughs> she mightn't like the fluff. It yeah. could be the necklace, though. Maybe the necklace was getting caught in the hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say to you, um, I like him more with hair. I like a guy. I don't want a guy with a shaved chest. There's I don't not a like lot of that. hair there, doll. I know. Like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> but I thought this you know. was interesting that he's never been seen with that before. So mm -hmm. people, have you guys ever changed anything about yourself for well, um, I a partner? So you know I do. But what if you had a partner that doesn't like it? Would you no. leave it? That's not no. my problem. You're a manscaping. No, I, don't, I, I think, you know, I don't shave, but I think everyone should have a... Every man in their <laughs> cupboard should have a set of clippers. Yes. And I think every man yes. should groom themselves. Because I just yes. think it's a nice <laughs> thing to hair. do. Chest hair. Yes. Oh. Chest, arms, legs. You know, I think it's always nice. Look, you're talking to the guy that goes to the hairdressers every Monday night. Okay. So I'm into total grooming. You know that's my thing. Mm. I don't know. What would you do if Doug all of a sudden stepped out of the bathroom with, with a shaved arms. wax? I with a shaved <laughs> chest. <laughs> I, I love my baby just the way he <laughs> is. If, is so he watching? <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's probably dying right now. So, you know, hey, you know, if that's what he wants to do, if he wants to try something new, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm Yes, but do you think if you asked him, so which is, which is we think might have happened with Yeah, that's Harry. what people are speculating yeah. We're, we're speculating. <laughs> would you ask your partner to to do it if that was your thing? I would. Yeah. I would. I, I would too. And you know, if they said yes or no? Would it bother that you would if they fun. said no? It, yeah, it wouldn't bother me at all. Mm. I mean, I would I would just kind of explain. I would stand my ground and <laughs> explain why yeah. I Yeah, it, me too. I think but that's something yeah. that's I think kind of... Sometimes men don't know. Well, what also, to do. guys yeah. do. We have to tell them, Lisa. Guys yeah. do tell <laughs> the do. women in their lives. Yeah, right? but like, I don't think it's always offensive, too. Like, if um, my boyfriend's like, oh, I really love, you know, when you curl your hair like that. I wouldn't be offended. I would be like, oh, I do my hair like that. Or if they liked it straight. I don't, I don't think it's offensive if your right. partner just says well, something they're attracted I think, to. Well, mm -hmm. I think and I would do it. Listen. Many years of being in the beauty industry, I would have husbands or boyfriends come in with their wives to drop them off, and they'd pull me aside. Oh, really? Oh, uh, <laughs> Troy. I didn't think she was as blonde as what she should be. I'd oh like to wow. see her blonder. Or really? don't cut too much off, I like it long. Or, and I'd be sitting there thinking, hold on, I know you're paying me a lot of money, <laughs> right. but I also find it interesting that the wife had lost her voice yes. in that conversation. Oh, interesting. And, oh. and they would follow routine. So would you do it? Would I you do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> If you ever came into my salons, I rule that salon, <laughs> not the husbands, even though they pay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, very interesting, but I want to quickly touch on, we all know cars, are the, well, they're driver free nowadays and it is happening. So what is going on? Okay, so we have the driverless cars that are going on now. So how do you guys feel about this? In California, uh, in <laughs> California, they are on the roads. They, now. The driverless cars are on the roads. Ooh. So we want to, I, I wanted to have a conversation with you to find out how you feel about these driverless cars being on the road with you as you're driving. Or if you will choose a car that has driverless features. I mean, how do you feel? I don't know. Because of the, a new report came out from AAA and it found that three quarters of Americans are feeling afraid to ride in a self driving car. I would be scared. And 10% only said that they felt even slightly safer on the roads with these cars. <laughs> Listen, so, I can't well, drive properly now, let alone being in a driverless car. Yeah. And I think everyone are bad, most people are bad drivers because I am. Well, yeah, <laughs> okay, well, like, you know. well my, my question is, I can't even get a cell signal from Lexington to 
to Pikeville on the Mountain Parkway without my phone going dead three oh, yeah. times. So how is a how is a driverless car going to make it? <laughs> right. Pikeville. And that's my question. Tell us what you think. We're going to post all this on Midday Kentucky <laughs> Facebook page. Interesting. I didn't think about that. Right. I, just, I know. Yeah. I just thought about that just then. <laughs> hey, coming up after this short break, we'll sit down with our friends from Winchester Chiropractic and we'll check it out on Tom and the Solid Blue drive-through. Yep. Stick with us, everyone. You're watching Midday Kentucky.